Dr. Kobi Mesa is a political marketing uh, analyst uh, speaking there to us. Uh, you're still watching Election Brief with me, Arba Kumasi. We're taking a short break. Don't go away. You're welcome back to Election Brief. Now, after several violent clashes, some involving attacks on its incumbent member of parliament, the Ododododio constituency seems to be cementing its reputation as one of the most volatile areas prone to electoral violence. There have been concerns about the firmness and the fairness of the police in prosecuting perpetrators of violent crimes in the constituency. As home to one of the most heated parliamentary contests in the December polls, the Ododododio constituency is the focus of our lens today on our Safety for My Vote series. Manuel Coranting has more. <laughs> Five twenty twenty, originally intended to be peaceful but turned violent. This is only one of several such episodes in a constituency that is fast gaining notoriety for electoral violence. Ododo Diodo. In fact, it is at the top of the list of hot spots identified by police in Accra. With at least 50 flashpoints identified in this constituency, residents here say they are living in fear. While the incumbent NDC MP Neil Antivanapoy and his main contender from the NPP Neil Antibanaman have committed to a peaceful election, the reality is a constant trade of allegations from boot camps, sometimes accusing the police of bias. Jamestown Police Station has become toothless bulldogs. In fact, they are impotent simply because the people over there, when anybody from the MPP stock assaults the NDC, nothing. It goes, it, it, it is just nothing. You, last time you saw somebody fired gun, ask whether that person had been arrested. The small arms, they have to work on their, they have to be on their feet to collect all the arms, especially the local guns. It's affecting But they are firing here yesterday. On their work, on their work, they are firing here. So I think they have to do something. And they should stop. The parliamentary candidate should allow. They should talk today. They should stop. And our parliamentary candidate to also allege that we shouldn't do anything concerned about the violence. But the candidate, uh, the NDC parliamentary candidate, is known for from violence. This trend is eroding confidence in the ability of the police to fairly deal with an explosion of political violence should it occur. Police in your be here, Papa. Can come if you are not going. Come if you are not going. Come if you are not it's like when you call, there's no good results. Because somebody out there will just also give command to suppress him. If the police, they are in, a, in their uniform, like we know what kind of police are, their service integrity. And the, is the service is there, but the integrity is not, is not there. But for Niai, a victim of the latest clash between the NPP and NDC, his gunshot wound is a reminder that elections must be without violence. Me, I'm ready to tell my brothers and sisters that this, we, we need peace in our, our community. But if right now we started fighting like this, it's no good. I have to tell my brothers and sisters that we have to stop everything because we are all one people. Nilante and Nilante, they are all one name. Uh, if right now I can just fight with my another colleagues, if you write, I call, my name is Nyaya, another person come on Nyai. In the midst of all these, one chorus seems to be echoing in all corners of the constituency, and that is for the police to increase its visibility there before, during, and after December 7. For Joy News, Manuel Cranting. 
All right, let's stay on Odudu Diodu a while longer. Joining me on the phone lines now is Edwin Nilante van der Poel. He's Member of Parliament and the NDC's candidate for Odudu Diodu. Thanks for your time. Um, what has been your evaluation of the atmosphere there so far? We're about 13 days to the elections. We know all the uh, electoral, you know, the violence that has happened in the constituencies ahead of the election. What's your evaluation so far? Because what I know is that uh, some time ago, both you and the NPP parliamentary candidate actually appended your signatures uh, to a code of conduct and you were committing to peace. So what is the situation so far? Hello, Mr. Van der Poy. Hello, Anaba. Yes, yes. Good to uh, hear from you. I think here most part of your question. Okay. Uh, please, uh, if you're kind enough to... Yes, repeat I'll it. repeat it. I was asking about your evaluation of the atmosphere in the constituency oh, because okay. we all okay, heard about you. that uh, walk you. which degenerated into violence. And later on, both you and the MPP uh, parliamentary candidate appended your signatures to a code of conduct committing to peace. So what is the status now? And can you assure us that between now and December 7, we won't witness any violence. Well, thank you very much. Let me say good afternoon to your viewers. Um, well, uh, whatever happened uh, in the past uh, is regrettable. I've, as a member of parliament for the constituency, uh, I have said several times that uh, I feel ashamed uh, for what happened, and uh, I apologize sincerely for the whole constituency. Uh, I don't want to even talk about who did what or who did what and who did not do what. I think the fact is that it's an indictment on our people and the violence was totally uncalled for, was unnecessary, and it shouldn't have happened in the first place because uh, I thought that um, we, we, we had educated our people so much that our people were ready to do what is right, keep the peace, and make sure we all live in peace. Unfortunately, um, what happened is, 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 is past and gone. Um, I'm happy that the Small Arms Committee, uh, Commission of Ghana, came to the constituency, committing ourselves to the need for us to respect the peace and keep violence out of our political um, atmosphere uh, leading up to elections. I am committed to it. Uh, I have sworn that I will do everything possible to make sure that my people uh, do not retaliate, mm. my people stay away from violence, my people as much as possible exercise maximum tolerance mm. at all levels. Even in the face of extreme provocation, I've taught my people that we have a good story and we have the people in our heart and the people love us. The people are ready to listen to us. Let's not resort to violence. Mm. Let's not behave like others. Let's keep the peace. Mm. Let's show maturity and experience. We have done a lot of work to show, and that is key. That is important for us. Mm. So uh, we, we've been doing that, and I'm committed to the peace. Right. For now, until election. Okay. And on election day, I can assure you that we shall do everything, everything, to make sure that we keep the peace. But however, as I said earlier on, mm -hmm. uh, last Sunday we had a mammoth walk. The police presence was huge. And the police themselves were happy, and we were happy that the police were around and everything went on smoothly. But we plead that the police take action on people who have been involved in violence in the past. As it's interesting you, you say that. I was coming to that. Uh, some of the residents, your constituents, have complained about the fact that when there are issues like this and they draw the police's attention, they don't hear anything from the police. There's no reaction from the police. There's no arrest, nothing. So what are you doing in your capacity as Member of Parliament for the area to ensure that some of these concerns are addressed? Well, I have engaged with the police, um, and I thank God that uh, uh, over the past few days, um, the police have given us some assurances that uh, they will make sure that the past is not repeated that uh, whatever happened, uh, they've assured us of their impartiality, they have assured us of their 
uh, a professional, uh, uh, you know, and diligent disposer to the work that is at hand. Uh, they need to restore some confidence in the people. That's the only way the peace that we are all preaching will be ensured. Because when the people are confident that police will act, the people will not retaliate. When the police are co- when the people are confident, trust the police to do what is right, the people will not take the law into their hands. And that is what I expect the police to do. We are doing our best. Mm-hmm. We shall continue to do our right, best. Right. Uh, but we will be expecting the police also mm-hmm. to do at least their maximum best right. to make sure that perpetrators of violence are dealt with. Okay. That will help. Right. And I plead that we shall all preach that. Mm. I, I noticed that uh, earlier you mentioned that, you know, uh, you held a mammoth uh, walk uh, just recently. It went off very smoothly. But I'm curious to know, did your supporters observe the social distancing rules? Because you've heard from health <clears throat> experts who are saying that one of the reasons we are seeing a rise in the COVID-19 cases is because of activities, political activities like health walks and, you know, rallies, mini rallies and the like. Uh, you know, some of this work, before you start, you ensure, <laughs> you tell the people to put on their face marks, they should keep the distance. So we, the leaders, will hold our arms and create the distance and expect that the people behind us. Will. But then when the frenzy is on, um, when people have entered the digital elements, mm. uh, uh, the, the, the protocols are sometimes... Shelf. It's and difficult. It's, it's, unfor- it's unfortunate, but then you see, it's a human society. Sometimes it's difficult for you to be able to compel everybody to do what you want them to do. Mm, all right. Okay. Well, we'll hope, hopefully, I mean, people will be observing the social distancing rules.